What a balloon! Oh my gosh. Greetings, my friends, and welcome to Seven Seas Lagoon as we cross this man-made body of water to the Magic Kingdom here in Walt Disney World. I'm Wade Heath for the Kingdom Report, and we are about to indulge in a character dining breakfast you'll never forget. It's bright and early, so early in fact, the theme park isn't even open yet. You too can be a part of this hack if you make a theme park reservation for Magic Kingdom and then make a reservation for a dining location prior to park opening. For example, our dining reservation today is scheduled for 8.20 a.m., whereas the theme park opens to the general public at 9 a.m., allowing you wide open walkways and a Cinderella castle all to yourself. It is totally worth it if you can get up just a little bit earlier than everyone else to come and enjoy a Magic Kingdom all to yourself. But that isn't what we are focused on here today. Nope, instead, we are zeroing in on the Crystal Palace. Dine in Victorian splendor in this greenhouse-inspired Crystal Palace. Idyllically set on Main Street, USA, join Winnie the Pooh and his friends for a whimsical, all-you-care-to-enjoy buffet breakfast. It's located just to the left-hand side of Main Street, USA as you walk in and it is a location that is stunningly beautiful. They begin serving breakfast here at 8 a.m., and you can enjoy bountiful buffets featuring American favorites prepared before you in the onstage kitchen. Start your day with delicious traditional breakfast fare, freshly baked pastries, fruit, and so much more in this location. Guests ages 3 to 9, $29 for you, and guests ages 10 and up, $45 for this character dining breakfast, or as they like to call it, a buffet with character. After heading down Main Street USA and taking a couple of photos in front of an empty Cinderella castle here in Magic Kingdom on this morning, I went ahead and checked in via the My Disney Experience app. Now, you can do it via the app or you can do it at the check-in desk located right here in front of Crystal Palace at the base of the steps. However you wish to do it, it's up to you. It is a lot more convenient to do it via the app. They tell you to take a seat on the patio and you do so in these well-appointed benches until they are ready to call you in. As soon as they are ready to bring you inside, you are then welcome to a Friendship Day celebration, the likes of which you've probably never experienced. And that is because it is with the 100 Acre Gang, that's right, Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore, and Piglet are in this location to help you start your day the right way in the Magic Kingdom. I was walked to my seat and told that the characters would be around shortly and that I should stay in my seat when I see the characters coming. They even gave me the lay of the land that when I saw them near certain tables, I should stay put because they would be coming to me next. This also was the time where my server let me know that there was alcohol available to me and presented me this menu, including a mimosa option. So if this is something you'd like to take advantage of, it is now available to you at the Crystal Palace. In addition to that, I was handed a collector postcard that said welcome to our friendship day celebration with the characters that would be featured in this restaurant today each holding their celebratory item that they use during their procession throughout the restaurant and on the back side all of their signatures were included on this postcard as well definitely a nice little collector takeaway that i appreciate them doing and certainly something i'm going to add to my collection after my server poured me a fresh cup of coffee, it was off to the buffet to check out all of the goodies they had in store for us. Keep in mind, while the buffet does look very large, the left side is entirely reflective of the right side. So they are identical sides for the sake of crowd flow, but certainly lots to offer. Let's check it out firsthand.
So many great items to choose from, so many things to select, and I went with this plate. As plate number one, cheese danish alongside a fruit danish, cheesy potato casserole, a Mediterranean frittata, fresh fruit, and right up front, prime rib hash. Now this was something I've never seen on a menu at Walt Disney World up until now, and I have to say it surprised me in all the right ways. Absolutely delicious. Another surprise? Winnie the Pooh came walking up out of nowhere and said hello, made sure I was enjoying my breakfast and was being well taken care of, directly followed up after that by Piglet. And I wanted to make sure I did not have any bacon on my plate until Piglet had passed by out of respect, and uh, now I can indulge all I wanted to. All the fun was continuing with the procession that was about to happen. Now, it feels like they do this almost twice an hour. I was there just a little over an hour. I did see it two times where all the characters grab some celebratory items and go in a parade form through both dining rooms here at the Crystal Palace. It has a lot of musical accompaniment and is one of the most adorable things I've ever seen. A really great way to get your child engaged in the character dining experience as Pooh and Piglet take one side of the dining room and Eeyore and Tigger take the other. It is a fun and very exciting thing to be a part of, especially because they want you to get in on the act and take photos as they walk by, making it a party type atmosphere for the Friendship Day celebration. It was just about time at this point to grab myself plate number two. I piled it with some goodies, including the bacon. I told you I waited for Piglet to pass me by. I know whose house I'm in. Along with a 50th anniversary celebratory pancake, a Denver frittata, another fruit pastry, as well as a blueberry muffin. Thought these were terrific. The pancake I could have done without, kind of flavorless and bland. Next up to see me was Eeyore. It was so great to run into him. I have to say, uh, he was in a great mood. I'm not used to Eeyore being this excited to see me. Usually he's quite gloomy. And of course, plate number three following him, uh, biscuits and gravy, a churro Mickey waffle you didn't even need syrup for. That was outstanding. I did get a second helping of that prime rib hash as well as the ooey gooey cheesy potato casserole. It really hit the spot. I finished off my character experience by parting a little bit with my boy Tigger here. He is always the life of every party and it meant so much that he could stop by. Something worth noting about this restaurant is that the characters tend to split the location in half, two on one side, two on the other. However, on occasion, it might get empty in one dining room and therefore the characters move to the other. They do very good about circulating. They do very good about making sure every table sees the characters. I was there for a little over an hour and I saw all the characters twice. The check had been presented to me. My server took very good care of me. As mentioned, for an adult at this breakfast, it is $45 plus tax and gratuity. With gratuity, it was just about $59 out the door for me. And reminder that children ages three to nine, well, they are $29 plus tax and gratuity. It is so great to have the characters back in this location for a very long time. This was always the 100 Acre Gang's stomping grounds. However, in the course of the last two and a half years, we all know what happened. And therefore, the Crystal Palace, when it did reopen, did not have characters at all. It kind of lost its soul in that process. However, the characters are back, the magic has returned to this location, and it is a stellar way to start your morning in the heart of Magic Kingdom Park. The Crystal Palace opened with the rest of the Magic Kingdom on October the 1st, 1971. When the restaurant opened, it was a cafeteria-style experience. This lasted until 1996 when the format of the dining experience changed to an all-you-can-eat buffet featuring character dining. At this time, the restaurant began to be referred to as the Crystal Palace, a buffet with character. Locations that influence the design of the Crystal Palace include the San Francisco Conservatory of Flowers, England's Kew Gardens, and the Crystal Palace in New York. Some sources cite the Crystal Palace in Hyde Park, which was initially built to house the Great Exhibition of 1851 as another source of inspiration. The Victorian exterior of the Crystal Palace was designed to serve as a transition, believe it or not, between Adventureland and Main Street USA. This being the Adventureland side that you're seeing here looks dramatically different from the Main Street USA side. We invite you to check that out on your next visit. 
and from at least 1985 until the year 2000, the Crystal Palace was sponsored by Colombian Coffee Growers. We do invite you to secure a reservation before park opening to have the Magic Kingdom to yourself. It is such a sought-after reservation, it can be very difficult to get and enjoy the characters in this location one more time. If you found this video informative and helpful, we invite you to subscribe to the channel with that notification bell firmly rung so you never miss a thing. A thumbs up means an awful lot. And for the Kingdom Report, I'm Wade Heath. We'll see you next time for another installment of the Disney World Dining Review. Welcome.